Hi, welcome back, Statics people. We're getting close to the end. We're starting on friction today. This is the intro to friction, okay? We all have learned about friction when we took physics class. It's no different here for this class, for this uh, particular course. And so let me tell you about friction, okay? And we all remember from friction that friction, friction, friction is fun. Friction is fun. Okay, well, okay, wait a minute. There you go, right? So friction, you remember this equation from, uh, from physics. Friction is mu times s, okay? Friction, we, we, I often call friction the friction force, but friction is really not a force at all. It's really a reaction to force, a resistance to motion is really what it is, isn't it? <clears throat> okay. So do we remember what this is? Mu sub s. There's also a mu sub k. Okay, you'll see both of these in statics. Mu sub s is the static coefficient of friction. Okay, and mu sub k is the dynamic coefficient coefficient of friction. Okay, so let me tell you about what these kind of are. Okay, static, of course, means it's stationary, it's not moving. Kinetic means it's moving, okay? But here, here's, here's kind of my analogy of friction, what's going on, okay? For those of you who are like, uh, like I am that live out in the country, you, we got a lot of dirt roads, okay? So when the wind blows, the dirt roads kind of get like this, okay? It blows up in little piles of sand like this, and we call this around here, we call this a washboard road, because it looks like the old-fashioned washboards, right? Well, if you drive your truck down this road, it'll shake your teeth out as you're going over those bumps, right? So how do you uh, smooth that out? Well, you just drive 70 across the bumps. So that way the tires only hit the tops, and they just kind of skip across the tops. Well, it's the same way with this. With uh, Let's say you move your couch, right? And your couch, here's the leg of your couch. Okay, there's the, there's the foot of your couch right there. Okay, I know what you're saying, but it's not that bumpy. Well, think about it on the microscopic level, okay? If I get down, there are imperfections on the bottom of that foot. There's imperfections on the floor, no matter what it's sitting on, right? And so when they're, when they're sitting there, all those bumps are kind of engaged with each other, right? So to get it to move, it's kind of hard because you've got to kind of up and over all those bumps. But once you get it moving, you ever try to push a couch or a chair or something, it's kind of hard to get started. But then once you get started, you're like, oh, okay. Then you can push it right across the room, right? Well, what's happening there is those imperfections are kind of locked up there with static friction. But once you get going, it's kind of like me driving down that dirt road. You're just skipping across the top until you stop and they can kind of re-interlock there, okay? So... Knowing that, which one of these is always going to be lower? Static coefficient of friction is always going to be higher. Mu sub k is always going to be lower. It's going to be less because think about that. Once you get it moving, it's kind of easier to push, isn't it? So this is, this is lower. This is higher. Always, okay? So if you kind of remember that little analogy, that will be pretty easy to stick in your head. Now, mu times n. Let's say... Here I am, I'm standing here, and I'm on a carpeted floor, which is pretty grippy, right? Let's say, for instance, that here I am, I am 220 pounds, okay, man size, and let's just, I'm making up a number, I'm going to say that my, uh, let's just say it's 0.5. My static coefficient of friction between my feet and the carpet is 0.5, okay? So here I am, okay? And, well, let me draw a picture of me. Here I am, okay? There I am, feet, feet, okay? What is the friction between me and the floor, okay? How many of you said, oh, 110, right? Half of 220, 110 pounds, right? Well, the answer is zero. What? Well, okay, friction is lazy. Friction is lazy, and it only needs what, what it needs to, to keep equilibrium. That's all it needs, okay? 
So let me change this and say this, okay? So now uh, I'm leaning on the board, okay? So I'm gonna put my feet over to a little bit like this, okay? So I'm leaning on the board, okay? And in turn, and in turn, the board is pushing on me, okay? So here's my normal force. Here's my weight. And then this guy is that friction force, okay? So here I am, I'm leaning on the board, okay? What's the friction now between my feet? Well, it's not 110 still. It's somewhere between zero and 110. 110 is the very max value. This is max. So you'll hear me ask a lot of times, um, th is this fun friction? Well, fun friction, when I say that, I'm, I'm asking, are we talking about maximum friction? This friction here is for impending motion. Or if you're from Texas, fixing to move. Okay, it's just fixing to move. Impending motion. It's on the brink of moving. It hasn't moved yet, but it's just right there. If a butterfly flies up and runs into it, bam, it's moving, okay? So this is only for impending motion. So if I'm just standing here, leaning on the board, do I have impending motion? No, because I can push harder on the board, right? Okay, how about this? I've been to the gym. I've been working out. Look at that. Bam! Okay. I'm going to push on this board as hard as I possibly can. And in between my hand and the board, I'm going to put a scale, a bathroom scale, right? I'm pushing as absolutely hard. I've been working out. Uh, I can bench press a thousand pounds. How hard can I push on that scale? Okay. The answer is 110 pounds is absolutely as hard as I can push because that's, not, that's my max value that the coefficient of friction between my feet will, will put up, okay? If I push 111 pounds, what's going to happen? My feet slide out from under me, bam, I fall and hit the floor. And we don't want to do that because that's a lot of mass hitting the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Okay, don't do that. Okay, so friction is lazy. Friction is going to be somewhere between zero and max unless there is impending motion. So we always have problems that say, you know, find the force to make this thing slide. So I need to find the force that it takes to start that motion where, where there's impending motion, okay? So most of the time we're, we are looking for fun friction or things are moving, things are sliding. That's when you know that you're at that max. But if you if it's not impending, right? If it's just me leaning on the board and I said, what's the friction force? You've got to have some more information. There's no way to do, there's no way to tell that, right? The friction under my feet at that time don't become 110. It just becomes another unknown that I have to use my equations to solve for, okay? So that's probably the number one thing. As students, every time they see friction, every single time they're like, boom, mu times n, gotta be, okay? No, only when friction is has impending motion. Things are moving. If it's not moving, if it's sitting there, it can have a friction force, but that friction is gonna be somewhere between zero and max. So I hope that's clear, okay? So let's talk about uh, an example problem. Let's talk about that one. If you, if you have had a physics class, you have worked that problem before. It says box one weighs 100 pounds. So this, this guy right here. The static coefficient of friction between the ramp and the box is 0.35. Find the weight of box two to maintain equilibrium. Okay, so let me erase my board and let's work this problem out. All right, so this is like a quintessential friction problem. If you take the FE test, this problem will be on there. I mean, it's always on there, okay? So how do we do this? First, let's draw a free body diagram of the box. Okay, so there's my box. That's this box, W1. What is acting on box W1? Well, it's got a rope here, and I could put a T there, but we know that rope going over a pulley the weight on this side is the same as the weight on that side. So I could just call this W2 here. Okay. The weight of the box is 100 pounds. That's given. Okay. Now what else is going on? Okay. There is a 
normal force, which also goes through the same point here, right? Okay. And then there is a friction force, okay? Now, the friction, the, and, and this chapter, gang, is all about the free body, 100%. There's one bit of bad news for this chapter, and that is this. You know how every, every, all the problems we've worked so far have been, I told you, just guess the direction, and if we got it wrong, we'll just get a negative. No big deal, right? The friction chapter, it's a big deal. If you get it wrong, if you guess the wrong direction of friction, you're going to get the problem wrong. It does not just give you a negative answer. It gives you a wrong answer. So now we got to get it right every time, okay? And this chapter is all about the free body. We're going to practice a lot of free bodies. Okay, so here's our deal. We have a 30% incline or a 30 degree incline. Okay, so this is 30 degrees. Now, my advice to you on a problem like this, when you have two unknowns like N and W and they are at a right angle to each other, tilt your axis because when I write the sum of the force in the X, that guy's not going to be in it. When I write the sum of the force in the Y, that guy's not going to be in it, right? So I'm going to make this my new X and I'm going to make this my new Y, okay? So tilted axis. If that's 30, then that's 60, then this is 30. Okay, and so what I can do is um, I can break this guy into components and one here. So this guy is 100 sine of 30 and this guy is 100 cosine of 30. Okay, so which way does friction go? Okay, so we got to find a range for, for this W2. There's going to be a range because what can happen for equilibrium is this box could slide uphill, then it wouldn't be in equilibrium anymore. Or if W2 is really small, this box would slide downhill and it won't be in equilibrium. And so what we have is this. W1 is, is uh, less than some value over here, but greater than some value over here. And we'll call this guy min, and we'll call that guy max. Actually, let's make that W2, shall we? W1's 100, isn't it? Okay, so we're looking for min and max. And depending on which condition we do, depends on which way this friction's going. So let's do min, okay? So W2 is very, very small. Very small. And what happens? The box wants to move down the hill, doesn't it? And if the box is going to move down the hill, friction is opposing that, so friction is going to go up the hill. So for the min condition, right, for min condition, friction is going to do that, okay? Now, at the point of slipping, there is impending motion, so I'm right there at that limit. That's where I'm trying to find. And so let's make this, is this guy going to be fun? Yes, he's going to be fun. So that's going to be 0.35 times n, okay? So here we go. Sum of the forces in the x, what do I have in the x direction? I've got a positive 0.35n. I've got a positive w2. And I've got a negative 100 sine 30. Okay. Well, that's got two unknowns. I can't solve that. Let's keep going. Here's some of the forces in the y. And in the Y, I have N going uphill. I have uh, this guy going downhill, minus 100 sine 30. Uh, oh, no, that's not sine. That's cosine. Sorry. Cosine. And then anything else in the Y direction? No. Okay. So the cosine of 30 is 0.866, so N is equal to 86.6 .6 pounds. Okay, now I can take that and I can plug that in right there. And then I can come up with W2, right? So W2 is going to be 50 on 50 minus, clear, come on, 50 minus 0.35 times 86.6 .6 
19.69. So W2 19.69 pounds, okay? That would go here. Okay? So now let's talk about the max condition. Okay, for the max condition. Now W2 is very heavy. And this box wants to slide up the hill. So what's going to change on this free body? If the box slides up the hill, we're, we're looking at max now. Well, if it goes up the hill, then the friction is going to oppose that, and it would go down the hill. So let's see, would our y equation change at all? No. Would our x equation change at all? Well, the only thing that changes, this guy went from being a negative, I mean a positive rather, to now being a negative, didn't he? Okay? So now we can resolve. This was this was min, right? Here comes W2 for max. It's gonna be what? Uh, 50 plus 0 0.35 times 86.6. 80.31. Okay, and so that gives us our max condition. Okay, so you see the only thing that changes there is friction changes direction. And most of the problems in the friction chapter will have two parts to them. There, there's two questions for each problem picture, right? One says, the thing slides to the left, one thing, one says the thing slides to the right. And, and if that in that case, the only difference is, is that friction is going to switch directions, okay? So getting friction on the correct way is essential and important to getting these problems right. Now we're going to practice this a lot. So hang on, watch the rest of the videos, and I hope this helps you. I'll see you next time.